Hello and welcome to the Warhammer 40k Militarum Tempestus Tactics video. I've had a few people say they really enjoyed the other videos I did on the Stormtroopers and so I thought I'd come back and offer a few more insights on them. Uh, a quick disclaimer, I am not a hardcore Tempestus Scion player. I did play them fairly exclusively for about six months, around a year ago when I was trying them out for a tournament. I tried running 1500 points of pure Militarm Tempestus and I learned a few things here and there, but ultimately I didn't invest in the army. So there you go. That's my disclaimer. I know a few things, but I'm no expert. But I can offer you some general insights on what I learned about the, the good old Stormies, the SAS of the Imperium. Um, and I'm ho you know, hopefully people who are considering the army will find these things useful or it'll at least help them make up the mind whether they actually want to commit. So that's what this video is going to be about. Just the general principles of the Militarum Tempestus. Okay. And sort of general thoughts and ideas on their competitiveness. So first off, what are the Militarum Tempestus? What are the Tempestus Scions? What are the Stormtroopers? The Kazakin? They go by many names. Games Workshop's always uh, rebranding them. And I think this is sort of uh, reflects the unit itself because they are quite versatile. They've changed somewhat over the years in terms of appearance. They're on their third different uh, sort of model set now. Originally, they were sort of sort of very sort of sci-fi with gas masks, very sort of grim dark sci-fi, and they've slowly and then they when the the models were Kazakhin models, they became a lot more sort of standard soldiery, just as well-armoured soldiers. And now they're in a sort of gothic sort of medieval style where they've got sort of breastplates and pauldrons and stuff like that. So there we go. So the models themselves have changed, but the general idea of the army, or should I say of the unit, because they only recently got their own codex, um, you know, only in the last couple of years, um, they're, they're, they haven't changed themselves. The, the way the unit function hasn't changed. So how the whole army just starts off is how, how, how the whole army is meant to play is as an elite force. I think one reason I struggled with it is that I came from playing pure infantry guard. I tried going straight into Militarum Tempestus and I struggled with the elite aspect of the army. This army is super elite. It makes Space Marines look like a horde army in some ways. These guys are very, very... They are the pure aspect. They are the, uh, re, they are the incarnation, the avatar of multiple small unit of MSU. Okay, so that's what you get yourself into with this army. They are an elite, versatile force that specializes in small unit combat. Okay? So your average... Scion is uh, uh, just a normal human. He's, you know, normal strength, normal toughness, normal initiative. Same leadership of a guardsman, even leadership seven, which I think is a bit silly because these guys are meant to be the best of the best. I think they should be a standard leadership eight or nine. But anyway, um, but he does have ballistic skill four. So these guys are kind of like uh, veterans, except for they come with carapace armor. So you've got a good four plus save across the board. In theory, that means you'll be taking 50% less casualties. You know, you were ever, you know, 50% of your casualties will be absorbed by your armor in theory. Uh, and you also come with a upgraded Lasgun. You get the Hotshot Lasgun. Now, the Hotshot Lasgun has been called many things, it's but it used to be the Hellgun uh, and now it's the Hotshot Lasgun. I don't know why they changed it, but there we go. And the La Hotshot Lasgun is strength three, but it's a big thing that people, the reason they like it is it's AP3, which means that even your basic dudes uh, can punch well above their weight thanks to uh, that AP3 aspect of the gun. Um, so yeah, that's that sort of hopefully paints a little bit of a picture of what the army actually is. It's small, it's compact, it's versatile, uh, but it's fragile. These guys are not space marines. They don't have a three up save, three up save standard. They don't have a uh, toughness four standard. They're also 
whilst the individual soldiers and the individual squads are particularly versatile, their support options aren't. You get an access to, if you're taking pure Militarum Tempestus, a mere two transports. You get access to the Torx Prime, which we've covered in another video, which is a fantastic little transport, if not very expensive. And you get the Valkyrie. And that's it. Your HQ choices are limited to Tempestus Command Squad and Commissars. The Commissar can be upgraded to a Lord Commissar, but essentially you have two command cho uh, HQ choices. And you have one. You have access to exactly one troop choice, which is Tempest of Scions, Stormtroopers. So you have a very limited amount of tools. However, none of those tools are bad. You might not have access to a lot of different types of unit, which means your army lists are always going to be quite similar. But what you do have is solid and dependable. It doesn't mess around. So that's kind of a... I would almost say, whilst the way the army plays is not necessarily forgiving for a new player, at least the codex is easy to get your hand, uh, easy to understand. Hell, you have like what four or five different unit choices. That's it. That's not complicated. You can pick that up and learn that pretty easy. But that leads me on to our next point, which is, what kind of players should really look into Tempest of Scions? I would not recommend these to a new player. I'd recommend these to someone who has, knows a bit about 40k, who's maybe got a you know few years experience under the belt, uh, someone who's maybe coming from a space marine army and fancies a bit of a challenge, or fight, or coming from maybe Dark Elder and wants to come over to the forces of man, or something like that. These guys are hard to learn. They are hard to use. You will take many beatings by using these chaps but they are good but i think the best way of describing this army and this is just sort of general musings this video it's a bit of a ramble a bit of a stream of consciousness but i think the best way of describing this army is if your plan goes to plan if your battle goes to plan and everything goes the way it should not to you know you don't get absolutely shit hot dice doing absolutely terrible dice it just goes the way it should then this army will conduct a successful alpha strike and will cripple your opponent and allow you to seal the game. However, if a single thing goes wrong, you are fucked. Like that's, if you have one bad turn of shooting, just one, that's fucked. If one squad does not complete their objective that you set them, you are fucked. If your opponent has a particularly fantastic turn, you are fucked. This, these guys are playing 40k on hard mode. Not even that. These guys are playing... Playing Dark Elder is normally considered playing 40k on hard mode. Playing Stormtroopers is like playing Dark Elder on hard mode. And the reason I say that is because both armies work very similarly they both have very fast units which can put out good firepower but are very very fragile however dark elder units are faster than tempestus units because they're skimmers and dark elder units are open uh, transports are open topped that's just say vehicles so the vehicles are generally faster because they're skimmers um fast skimmers and they're open topped uh, and they generally put out more firepower. So you see where I'm, you see where I'm getting at here. Um, the best of science, you, it's like playing a difficult army on difficult mode. But that doesn't mean they're bad. It just means that you have to. Re you just can't make a mistake. You make a single mistake, you lose your whole army. Whenever I use this army, what I t when I was getting near the stages of working it out, I would find that. I would hit hard and fast in the first two turns of the game. But then more often than not, things would fall apart near the end. So I give an example. I was playing 1,500 point army. I had 750 points of Scions and 750 points of Skatari. It was before the new Arata was uh, released. So I had uh, Skatari and Torox Primes and Tempest of Scions dropping, dropping down. 
match made in heaven. But Scutari plays similarly to uh, Tempesta Science, which is they're fragile, but they hit hard and fast. So what happened is, to give you an idea of how the army functioned, I was playing against Tau. Uh, they had a Riptide, some Hammerheads, Missile uh, team, all that kind of stuff. And what happened is in the first two turns, I destroyed one of the two Riptides. I destroyed the uh, one of the two Hammerheads. I destroyed the Riptide. I got rid of a devil fish, I wiped out, you know, first two turns went really well. And then the I had one two things lost me the game. I had one bad turn where eight out of eight this is how bad it was, eight out of eight plasma guns overheated and killed their operators. Only a, I only needed two of the plasma guns to go through to essentially win me the game. I got eight ones followed by eight ones followed by eight one twos or threes. That's how bad that turn was. That crippled me. That meant my opponent went a turn without having the pressure on him. And that's all the towel needed. And they kicked my ass. By the end of it, I was tabled. That's how this army rolls. That's a perfect example of it. I had, my opponent was ready to concede the end of my turn two. The, he had had one turn and he was ready con to concede. He couldn't see a way out of it. I had one turn and I lost. I had one bad turn and I lost the game. So that's what this army is like. It's good. It hits it. It was hitting hard and fast. It had Tau on the ropes. And trust me, it was the Tempestas that were that were pulling the weight. I know there was Skatari in there. They were part of the second wave. The Tempestas went in there, turn one and two, with plasma guns and metal guns, and they fucked shit up. They did a really, really good job. And I think it was actually, sorry, excuse me, it was 1,000 points of science and 500 points of uh, Skatari. I apologise. Um, so yeah, that's that's how the army works, how the army plays. The army is, it, it's very, it's shooty focused, obviously. You're, most of the time you're going to be running five-man toughness three squads with weapon skill three. So most of the time you're not really going to be wanting to get into combat. But you're all about close range firefights. The army's quite fluffy. Uh, the army's quite, I say, it's in a funny sort of way, for, you know, 40k is not known for its realism. But I would say this army plays very realistically. You are playing as elite special forces. People who, in the real world, and obviously I'm, massively generalizing here uh, are known for hitting hard and fast and brutal they cut the head off the snake and the body dies but if the mission doesn't go to plan they start they can't sustain the casualties think of what is it lone survivor there's a that navy seal team or i can't remember, i don't know the film particularly well I, I know it's based on real events but essentially there was five or six special forces that everything was going well then the plan went to shit and most of them died. One of them survived. They got overwhelmed by numbers. That's kind of how this army plays out. Like the, like the lone survivor situation. Everything goes to plan. It goes well. The moment one little thing goes wrong. You start dropping like flies. So. That is my general thoughts on the army. Um, I haven't really got much more to say. In a, general, a generalist term about it. We'll obviously go into more details. Tactics. In other videos. Such as to Torox Prime or not to Torox Prime, to Deep Strike or not to Deep Strike, is the Valkyrie actually worth a damn? Who to ally with? Do you need allies? At what points level do the Scions start struggling? At what points level are they most effective? And so on and so forth. Um, so plenty of material going forward here, but I feel like the sign videos are going to be a little bit shorter because I'm not going to make any wild speculations. I'll tell you what I know. Um, but I won't, I won't bullshit you because there's no point in me giving out bad advice on the internet. It just doesn't help anyone. But yeah, I hope in general people will have found this video useful. I hope it's given them an idea of whether they want to collect scions or maybe add a little scion detachment to their army. Um, yeah, I really, that's what I hope. Because if you're the kind of player that sees space marines and goes, oh, I don't really see how they're an elite army. They're just big and clunky and they, they just win by brute force. I want an elite, I want a real special force some. If you're the kind of person that likes, uh, you know, to read those stories about the SAS or, you know, um, Delta Force or Navy SEALs, 
you know, a small band of people go in and they, uh, you know, they do it, they, they fuck shit up, you know, commando raid, paratroops, stuff like that. If you, you know, they, this army can also, you can get a fair few bodies in it if you take double CAD or CAD in formation. You can get like 100 stormtroopers. Um, if you like that idea, then this is a very good way of building an airborne army. If you like the idea of paratroopers, these guys can do it. Um, so yeah, that's overall, that's, you know, this, it, this that's, if that's the style of army you're going for, then these guys will definitely uh, scratch that itch. But, as I've said throughout the video numerous times, try not to, uh, try to avoid repeating myself, these guys are fragile as fuck. They are elite to the core. They need... Their every single squad should be considered a well-husband resource. You can't throw away a squad on a limb. They have to have a proper function and purpose. Okay? Uh, the last thing before we move on, or before we finish the video, is... Are they competitive? We'll, we will look into this question in more depth in future videos, but... I would say that Scions can be taken to a tournament and do okay. They aren't Elder, they aren't Tau. If you're looking for a super army, you know, who's going to scoop up all the tournaments, I wouldn't consider Scions the people to do it with. But they are not god awful. They can hold their own, they can do okay, and they will surprise people. One thing I'd say that a lot of tournament, if you do take this army to a tournament, people won't expect it. People never face them. They're such a cool army, and people never face them. So a lot of players, maybe you know, not maybe some of the mid tier and lower tier tournament players, they won't really know how to handle it. They'll have to spend the first two turns figuring out what your army does, and they're the first two turns. They're the ones where you do the most damage. So that's when you'll have them on the ropes. It's a little, another quiver. Another, another uh, arrow in your quiver. Another string to your bow. Anyway, like I said, I hope you found this video uh, useful, informative. Hope it's made. Uh, hope it's allowed some people to make their minds up on whether they want to include sounds in their army or not. And we will be going into the force as a whole in more detail in uh, other videos in the series. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.